Our government is committed to supporting the most vulnerable Canadians among us, and that includes people who are experiencing homelessness. That is why our government is also providing $100 million in emergency winter funding for more shelter spaces across Canada. This funding, which is delivered through the Reaching Home program, will go to 85 communities across the country to help them provide shelter spaces for people experiencing homelessness. This investment will help shelters increase their capacity and deliver essential services like temporary rental assistance and hot meals, which is so crucial during these cold winter months. Today's announcements add to the important updates that we announced last week to improve the um, housing program. Our government is adding extra funding We're adding $362.4,000 to communities so that they will have the necessary resources to help newcomers settle in Canada. I like that on Sunday, our government announced a two-year extension on the existing ban on foreign buyers of Canadian housing. This means that the ban will now be in place until January 1st of 2027. For years now, Foreign money has been coming into Canada to buy up residential real estate. This has fueled worries about Canadians being priced out of housing markets in cities and towns across the country, and particularly in major cities, particularly in Vancouver and Toronto. By extending the foreign buyer ban, we will ensure houses are used as homes for Canadian families to live in and not as a speculative financial asset class. Our government's economic plan is about building an economy that works for everyone. And that means fighting for Canadians every day. Things are still hard for a lot of people in Canada today. But each day is also bringing more evidence that our economic plan is working. Inflation is now down to 3.4% from its peak of 8.1%. Wage growth in Canada has now outpaced inflation for 11 months in a row. There are 1 million more people working in Canada today compared to just before the pandemic. And just last week, we had some good news. According to Stats Can uh, forecasts, Canada's economy grew 1.5% in 2023, and that exceeded expectations. Private sector economists are predicting that Canada will now avoid the recession that many thought was inevitable. And we started this week with some more good news. According to a report released yesterday by Bloomberg, Canada has the best battery supply chain in the world. Out of the 30 countries that were ranked, Canada came first, dethroning China for the first time. This is a really big deal for Canada. It is a big deal for auto workers. It is a big deal for people who work in mining. It is a big deal for Canadians across the supply chain. It means tens of thousands of Canadians will have great careers today and great careers tomorrow. It means we're unlocking the promise of Canada for the 21st century. And it is further proof that our economic plan built on the foundation of our investment tax credits is working, making Canada a leading foreign investment destination. That is already the case. In fact, in the first half of 2023, Canada received the third most foreign direct investment in gross terms of any country in the world, and per capita, more investment than any other country in the G7. We know that many Canadians are struggling to make ends meet, struggling to juggle all of their bills at the end of the month, struggling to pay the rent. And that's why we've put in place the measures I've announced today. We also know that we have an economic plan and we have a lot more work to do on that plan to unlock a brighter future for everyone in our amazing country. Merci.